Take your arms into your uh, at your heart. Inhale and breathe in. And we're going to exhale and go down to the down dog. I know I can tilt this down. So when you're ready, go to down dog. See if that works. Okay, good. Now, when you're in down dog, walk it out. Oh, my goodness. Bend one knee, bend the other. Oh. And let your breath, if you can, bring it into your nose. Really fill up the cells, the lungs. And then you can lift both heels and lower both heels. And lift and lower and lift and lower. Now hold the heels towards the floor. Five, four, three, two. And on the one, let your knees down and just take a couple of cat cows. Round your back and lift. Round and exhale, lift. Cat cow. Good morning, cat cow. Good. Now that could be your motion, or if you care to add on a down dog, up dog articulation, it'll go like down dog. Lift your heels, articulate through your spine. Inhale, up dog. Now tuck the chin, articulate through your spine. Lift your heels and up dog. Breathe in and tuck your chin. Articulate your spine. Now remember, you can always do the cat cow if you prefer, or really have fun with this up dog, down dog at your own pace. So don't worry about what anyone paces is, anyone else's pace is. Curl, enjoy, and just one more. Breathe in. Inhale. Exhale. And downward dog. Now, even if you're in cat cow, come to downward dog. Step or walk or jump up to the halfway position. Breathe in. Now, once your blood pressure settles, go all the way up into a bit of a back bend here. And inhale, go over to a half moon. And hold the half moon on the side. Now, keep reaching up and over. Adding on the hand down, the foot cross, keep reaching, keep stretching, up, and even through the fingers, breathe. Up, both hands, the feet go underneath the hips, go over, breathe, yep. You can just feel it getting longer on that high side. And then down, you can even cross, breathe. Breathe, good. Inhale. Stretch. Inhale. And then exhale, both arms up, both feet underneath the hips. Bring your feet out. Bring your arms out. Lift up your right toes and point them the same direction as your right fingers. Reach out and then let your hand down. Now this arm, we're going to go into a few circles, just two or three or four or five, whatever feels good. And then we're going to hold it someplace that feels that gets good for you. Over the ear is an option, reaching or straight up or even behind your back. And... Breathe into that side you're stretching, just like you did with the half moon. Keep lengthening. Now the wrist is still neutral. It's not cocked forward or back. It's just in line with your forearm. Breathe in, breathe in. Your back's against an imaginary wall. That always helps increase that stretch. Breathe in, breathe in. Now one inhale. Exhale, up. Here we are, strong in five-pointed star. Pivot the feet. Now the left toes face the same way as the left fingers. Reach out, like I'm pulling your arm. Come down. Now this arm that's in the air, it can do, we'll say a few three to five circles. Breathe in. You can feel if it needs more. Ah, uh, 
and then it'll feel like you want to hold it in a place and hold, breathe, stretch. Yeah, it could be behind you as well. I'm showing an over the ear variation, but see what's see what your body's calling for. Keep stretching. Yeah, the wrist feels neutral. The knees feel long and soft. Good, looks so good. That's it. Do the fingers get attention? The feet are helping you, but the toes aren't death gripping the floor or over curled. Ah, you can feel the muscles releasing, right? Notice how that feels when they get longer. Take an inhale. Now with your strong core and your strong legs come up, bring the toes facing in or actually slightly internally rotated. Exhale down and the hands can slide down the shins. Maybe they'll go to the ankles and pull and shake out any tension. Now the hands go to the floor between the feet and under the hips. Now, an interlaced finger position at the low back, you can add that on, and if that's not good for you, leave your arms down. Hold five. And then bring the hands back down. Now, the hands are on the floor, and try bending one knee, and try bending the other knee. It doesn't really matter how low you go. You just want to listen to your body. So you might be able to go a little lower than the first one, the first knee bend. Yeah. Breathe in. You go to what your body says. Breathe in. Yep. Nice. And I like that too. When you're, if you're going all the way down, it does feel good to kind of lift the other toes up. Now you're going to walk the hands out. This is the hammock pose your knees are long again your toes are in and it's almost like down dog meets wide angle pose hold and just think about pushing your hips back lengthening through your knees you can add on here if you care to which is a lift the heels and it's okay if you have to adjust a little bit but then you do the up dog here with wide legs and then you curl back. Now heels press, you lift your heels. This is an optional add-on. Breathe in. It's one of those you either love it or don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> Go up again. Inhale. And exhale. Now once you're here, walk your hands in closer. Go to one leg. So both hands are on the right leg. And enjoy, relax your neck, enjoy that side. Walk over to the other leg, enjoy that side. Slowly come back to center. You can even put one elbow, uh, hands on the elbow and just kind of rock your torso. And then we're gonna place the hands on the hips and come up halfway, pause long enough for blood pressure to adjust. Then you can come all the way up. It'll feel like you're more balanced inside. Lift your heart, breathe in. Hands come together at the heart and you can step or jump together. And let's grab a step if you'd like. And the option is to inhale, lift up, up, and exhale, let your hands down, let your feet back. Now, down dog, 
And the option here is that you lift your heels and you articulate your spine three times, up dog, down dog. You can also just do the down dog portion or you could do a cat cow. So breathe in, inhale, getting your spine mobile even more. One more, breathe in, inhale, and exhale. Now the hands, or excuse me, the feet walk up to the hands, halfway position. Once your blood pressure feels settled, go up, go back, breathe in. Now both arms continue to sweep around to your back side. See if your right foot, I'm going to get off this mat, can go to your hand or hands. Hold tall. Good. Ten. There you go. Nine. So your ribs pull down. Breathe in. Now, if you care to add on, you could push. It's a standing bow pose. 10. Take another inhale. Now exhale and come up to standing hands at your heart. Inhale both arms up and then they, they reach your foot. So I'm going to turn to you one foot, the left foot's in the hand or hands. Hold strong and tall. And then possibly add on. Good, gorgeous. Breathe in. We're going to take that inhale and exhale slowly come back hands come to the heart grab a sip if you want meet me back there on that mat and as you're ready your arms go out your feet go out this is five pointed star palms face up lift and spread your right toes towards the same direction that your right fingers are facing, and then bend the right knee a few times. This is called bend yoga when you're just sort of prepping a joint. Feel how it's tracking, and then when you're ready, put the knee over the heel, leave it. You may decide you need a wider stance if you're feeling stronger or narrower if you need modified. For now, look over the hand. It's a, a right hand. It's a warrior two, Virabhadrasana pose. Pull your arms as far apart as you can, opening up the chest. Keep the knee over the heel. Your, thigh, your left thigh is rotating backwards, meaning it's spiraling backwards. You're not letting the hip kick forward. It's as if both booty cheeks and both shoulder blades are on a wall. Now inhale, and as you're ready, your exhale can bring your right forearm down, your left arm over. That case, Pars O Kanasana, which is extended side angle. It's a long line from finger to foot. You may decide you want to go lower. You may decide you want to stretch your arm behind you. I always like this arm behind sometime in the yoga sequence. And you might even hold your own. Just want you to find what works for you. You're mixing it all, take it all in. Take another inhale, and then as you exhale, we're going to come back up. Now your front knee, just keep it the same and go back. Ooh. Breathe 
breathe, breathe, breathe. And just sort of uh, feel how your right knee is on the heel. Um, it's gonna try to drift inward, but you're gonna keep it over the heel. Inhale, bring your arms out like a T. Straighten that leg. This is five-pointed star. Now pivot your left toes. Let the left knee do a few bends. And you're seeing, is it tracking? I'm getting synovial fluid in there. The knee's gonna end up over the heel. And then stretch out the arms. Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Karen, act like I'm pulling your right arm and come a little more. Yes. Didn't even finish the sentence. Hold that. And take your inhale. Now let the exhale, let your forearm come down on the thigh, most likely. The right arm goes over your ear. Now, it may be that you want more. You may decide you put your forearm, or excuse me, your, your knuckles down or your top hand behind. Floor. Yeah, try different. What do you need? Five, four, three, two. Now get ready. Push up hand back. Your hands on your thigh or your calf. Your other arm goes up and then the the left leg it's going to try to straighten but you're going to keep it about 90 degrees. It's like a squat. It's doing a squat. Good. Good team. That was it. Good Betty. Keep stretching through your elbow. It'll increase that side stretch. There you go. Yep but your wrist doesn't have any uh, tension in it. Now inhale. And then exhale, come out like a uh, warrior two. Straighten your knee. The toes are in. Get ready, come down and just shake, just relax. Hands on the floor. Leave your right arm, or I like to put my knuckles on the floor. You could put your hand or your knuckles. Left arm spins up, windmill. Yeah. Breathe in. Exhale the hand down and open up the right arm. And then gently come down. Now bring both hands to your hip bones and come up halfway. Let a blood pressure adjust. Push all the way up when it does and your elbows come squeeze together heartless. Breathe in and your hands come to your heart. Your feet can step, shimmy, or jump together. Some seat to heat, grab a sip of water. Good job, guys. This feels so good. And then cheers. Lift and spread your toes. <clears throat> We're going to take a tree pose. The, the lift and spread your toes wakes up your arch. See if you can create space between each of them. And then you leave them down, but they don't curl up like a, um, an excessive flexion. Then your right foot can come up. You're going to find a tree for you. I am, of course, going to offer a shoulder opener here because it's my favorite thing to do here. I want our shoulders healthy. Breathe in.
arms can release and they can glide down to your heart. Lower the other foot and then lift and spread your toes. The other foot comes up. You can take your other cow face with your upper body or an arm up or palms together. And we're roughly holding this 30 seconds here. Breathe in. Now inhale and let your arms gently flow out of there, hands to your heart, lower your foot. Woo. <laughs> Wonderful job. We're going to take a Parsvokanasana, the pyramid pose, right foot forward, left foot is back and I'm in a railroad track uh, configuration, not a tightrope. Go inhaling up. So you notice we had little Vinny Yoga movements. The arms now are big, doing big circles. And then you can find a place that feels like a great stretch for you. Interlaced behind you, both elbows maybe, or palms together, namaste, reverse, inhale. Exhale, hinge. Now your gaze will shift, most likely toes. And then still keep your shoulders in a stretch. Right hip steers back, left hip steers forward. Four, three, two, push your spine up into a back bend here. Lift up. Your arms can reach up too, like a big V. Inhale. And let your hands glide in front of your heart. And left foot meets the right. So I'm a CT. Right foot gracefully lands back. And perfect. Now you can inhale the arms up and around. As big as you can. Inhale up and around. Inhale up and around. And let's do another one. Find the shoulder release that serves you. Namaste reverse. Interlace fingers or elbows holding on. Inhale. Exhale hinge towards your long leg, but it's soft in the knee. Right hip forward, left hip back. Notice how that feels, lengthening through both legs. Push up and even beyond the midline. Heart lifts, breathe the arms up. Exhale, your hands come to the heart. Let your right foot land softly. Elasticity, we're practicing there. Sama Sitihi, grab a sip and I will meet you back. Wonderful, guys. The option will be uh, go into down dog or spinal articulation or cat cow. So inhale the arms up, exhale the hands down. Now it could be down dog 
Or cat cow, lift your heels, articulate through your spine. Breathe in, tuck the chin. Heels down, inhale up. In, up dog, tuck. And lift, inhale. Awesome, and tuck down dog. Now the feet can go up to the hands, step or jump, halfway position. Then once you feel settled, go all the way up. Inhale, and hands come to your heart. Now the left foot's gonna go back, four feet deep or more. The front thigh is at 90 degrees. The back foot's kind of 45 degrees out. Now I'm gonna turn to you so you can see my arms. One suggestion on this Warrior One Virabhadrasana is to, because our uh, sense is opening the shoulder and chest area, you could uh, be better off with that field goal post. If you can add on a more traditional lift and glide the shoulder blades down, that could be for you too. So just notice what do you need. If you're sort of feeling upper trapped height or like the, it's so hard to lower the shoulder blades there, then this one's usually just a nicer one. So. Front thigh is 90 degrees over that heel. Go ahead and sort of change it. Heart is opening. Back leg is really strong. Yeah, really, really strong. You must imagine you've gone through a, a door jam. You cut your arms and they're opening your chest. Breathe in. Now we are gonna change it. Your arms are going to shift forward, lift your back leg and do warrior three. This is a balance pose on one leg. See if you can be parallel to the floor. If not, be diagonal. 10, nine, take an inhale. Now you're going to land, step seat to he, feet together. Good job, let your everything get back. Blood pressure, breathing, heart rate. Take that foot four and a half feet deep. There's a little 45 degree angle on that, but my feet are in railroad tracks. This knee's 90. Now it could be that you open up your arms like a field goal post. Check your wrists, sometimes they tend to really exaggerate back. You want them neutral, or you could be arms up, but where do you need to be? Thigh strong, back thigh long. You can even soften your eyes a little bit and just that'll help relax the jaw sometimes or the any tension in the scalp. Really press through that back leg and you might feel that calf stretch. I definitely do. Keep pressing through the outside edge of that back foot, front, front thigh strong. There's a little rib tuck and a little pubic bone up that helps you stay out of the low back. Breathe in. Now, there's a hinge and the arms can reach. You're getting ready to take off for warrior three. Warrior three is Virabhadrasana three. Back leg tries to be parallel to the floor. The modification will be your one long diagonal. Ten. Two, three, four, good. Five, six, awesome, Michelle. Seven, eight, nine, breathe in. Exhale, bring your feet together, hands at the heart. Nice job. Do, uh, grab a sip, meet me back. Good job. Mm -hmm. And you're back in Samasitihi, the arms go out, the legs go out. This is called Five Pointed Star. It's one of the uh, moves that we come back to for clarity. You'll hear it a lot. The possibility is to lift the right toes and point them the way towards the fingers. Now, the next possibility is triangle. The harder or the extra bonus, the option is to lift up the left arm and the uh, left leg and make it, it's called balancing half moon, 
or crescent pose this way. So you can do a triangle like before or the balance. While you're there, if you care to bend that top knee and hold on to that foot or ankle and then open up, you can. We're going to take an inhale, release that foot, soften it back down, bring up your arms. Here we are in a five-pointed star. Lift up your left toes. Let's go the other way. Shift. Now it's up to you. Would you care to do a triangle? Would you care to, I'm getting in view, soften the knee and then put the fingers down and then lift up the right leg and the right arm. Breathe in. Everything's growing and expanding. Now you could also top knee bends and you hold on to that foot and you still open up kind of like a dancer pose. Breathe in. No opening. You can release. You can exhale that foot back. Your hands come to your heart and you're breathing. Some CT. Ooh. And we're going to take a sip. Meet back here. That was terrific, guys. Meet back here. We're going to touch another crescent pose. I, I think it's interesting that there are a lot of different crescent poses in yoga. So this time, the lift and spread your toes. The right foot's going to stay forward. Send the left foot pretty far deep, maybe four and a half. Now, the um, heel is off the floor on that back foot. I know I have a salt lamp there, but it's off the floor. And uh, you're, it's very similar to Warrior One. Your feet are in line with your hips. Your back heel's off the floor, not down at 45. Really uh, feel the pubic bone pull up for the abs and the ribs down so that you're, you're not just slamming your femur into the hip socket. You've got a little tone around the lower abs. Five, four, nice. Three, yep, you're in a little bit of a back bend here. Two. Now your hands, are gonna to come to the heart, hinge forward, and in one motion, let's try to land the back foot to the front foot softly. Good. Now, in one motion, try to land the back foot about four and a half feet deep. Back heel is off the floor. And your arms can lift. Uh, there's a gentle pubic bone pulling up, a, a rib pulling down, strong front thigh, strong, powerful pose. There is a back bend here, so you're not hovering over the front thigh. You're doing a little extension like swan. Good. I like to think you're just receiving the morning sun. You're inviting all the morning sun. That's why this one was part of the sun citation. Greeting to the sun, devotion to the body. Breathe in. Inhale. Now your hands can come to your heart. You will pitch forward. In one motion, the foot lands next to the other. Good. Hands come to the heart. Nice job. I am going to tilt the screen down a moment, a little bit, I mean, and I'll meet you. can grab a sip. I'm going to meet you down there. We're going to do some of my swans. Meaning uh, thoracic extension. So to get there, you can inhale your arms up. You can exhale your hands down. You can place your feet back and lower with uh, control down. Now, once you're down, your hands may shift forward and wider and then come up. Hold the extension. 
Good. Yep. Or swan or sphinx. Lower, and the hands come by your hips. Come up. Possibly lift the toes. Relax, interlace your fingers if you care to add on, lift up. If you would like to switch your fingers, you can interlace them and lift. If you need a modification, just put the hands beside your hips. Let your hands go to your feet or your ankles. Inhale, lift. Lower and either take the other side or do that again. Inhale, lift. Lower, child pose, press your hips back. All right, here we go, rest. And then we're gonna take a left hand, leave it down, left knee, leave it down, stretch your right arm up, breathe in. Lift up, God, lift up your hips. Keep reaching, keep opening. Inhale. Now we're taking the other side. I'm turning just so I can see you, but you don't have to. Open up. Inhale. Now a brief child pose and rest there. Forearm plank or hand plank. I'm offering you the choice. I'll take a forearm plank just to demonstrate. Your back legs are long and you're going to hold. Good guys. Energetic. And I am going to be offering a Maldrasana, which is half sphere. So you could either take a side plank on your forearm as a modification, or you could take your side uh, hand plank and then put your back foot back. I'm addicted to this pose. I always have to show it. Thanks for enjoying, for understanding. Ten. Five. Two. Now we're doing the other side, so it could be you do side plank on your forearm as your modification, or your side planks on your hand, your top foot bends. I, would, I would think of that as like a bridge on the top leg and lift up. It's kind of like a bridge meets a side plank. Breathe into your heart, your chest, your hips are lifting. Yeah. Inhale. Exhale, lower your hips. Now take your feet out pretty wide, guys, like uh, Upavista Konasana pose. Go up and over, and I'm going to show a couple different ways. Your one arm could be in the middle, but it might also feel better for you to have it on the outside. So don't force 
the pose. In other words, just whatever helps you get into lateral flexion. Any kind of movement is just fine. Breathe in, up and over, and then just any kind of hand position that helps you on this side stretch. Inhaling. And just try to go down the middle. If you need a pillow under your tush, that's okay. Gently come up. We're wonderful. Now we're going to take a, an inhale to slowly roll down and exhale. So your hands can be beside your shins. And right about here, I start wanting my feet out a little further to make up for the fact that my body weight's more on this side of my fulcrum. So even a little more. And just sequence, sequence, sequence. You can imagine each vertebra having its own turn on this, on this floor one full body stretch and make it what you need, which is shifting uh, your hips, but your knees stay long. Let your feet come to the floor and curl your spine up to some bridging. Bridging and bridging. Every part of your low back should touch the floor right before it lifts up, or that's our goal. Now, when your hips are up this time, interlace your fingers at the lower back and kind of walk your shoulders under. Sutra Bandhasana, breathe into your heart. Breathe into your gut, your instinct. Breathe into your safety center, your creative center. Inhale. And then exhale, lower your spine and let your hands come behind your head. Lift up your feet and you're going to take a yogic bicycle. I'd like to invite you to a party of 50 yogic bicycles and just listen to your body. If you need to do fewer, do fewer. But it's fun to have these little challenges and goals and then when you do them, you realize how far you've come and then you can pull your toes back on some of them try 20 more and notice what thoughts come across your mind I'm so glad my body's strong I'm so glad I get to use it this way it's pretty neat to be able to stay strong Enjoy the body. And when you think you've done 50 and you're ready, hands go to your feet. Now this is a bound angle lying down, Supta Baddha Konasana. And I like to add a rock here. It's so nice to, uh, it's almost like a massage on your sacral muscles, those piriformis and low back. Then take Happy Baby and under Malasana.
While you're here, hold on to your big toe with two fingers and take your left hand either down your thigh and lift up. I'm in a, um, it's called holding on to the big toe pose. I'm in a split. The hand can be on the thigh, but if you want a little neck support, just put your hand behind your head. Feel one leg getting a lot of hamstring stretch. Nice, Karen, your reflection looks great. Five, four, three, two. Now rest the head while we switch sides. So the other two fingers go around the other big toe. Your right leg's gonna stretch out. Exhale, here we go. Tuck the chin, come up. Yeah. Belly in, you feel tight abs. Can't straight the stretch. And then exhale, relax when you're ready. Right ankle to left thigh, hands reach through. Give a little rock. You might like a pillow on this one. Try the other side, ankle to thigh, reach your hands through. Left leg goes long, right knee goes over. You can even add some arm circles here. We're going to do a, a spinal twist, it's called. Oh, yeah. The palm will stay out, uh, facing up as well. And then when you're ready, we rotate to the other side. Your hand can help your knee. It's like a paperweight holding your leg down and your arm can do circles. And we don't wanna notice how good your shoulders are doing. We wanna keep them so healthy. That's why I throw in a ton of uh, stretches and mobility for them. Palms open. Now, take another inhale, and then as you exhale, come up, and then take your feet wider than your bridge pose would be, so wider than the mat. Drop your inner right knee down, and if you want more, pick up your left ankle and put it on top of that thigh. Your arms could go up, like a field goal post or overhead stretch. Top of that thigh, feel the low back as well. the breath help your stretching so as you exhale you might try to bias your exhale meaning a longer exhale breathe 
breathe in. Now your feet go back to that wide bridge position. Your inner knee drops up the left leg. Your right ankle can put the left thigh down lower. Arms are up overhead still. Breathe in. Inhale. And then exhale, take another full body stretch. And if you have a yoga block or a foam roller handy, you can put it underneath your hips and then put your feet up on the wall and feel the vessels get some relief. Feel the lower back get some decompression because the hips are finally higher than the rest of the lumbar. Uh, in the spine, especially in the lumbar. Try to let the space between the intervertebral disc get big, like a, like a, the filling of a, a donut almost. It's like you want to have that plump and spacious. So the hips are higher. The lumbar spine is now decompressing. Breathe really fully into your diaphragm and that makes the ribs expand away from each other and the ribs are attached to the lumbar to the spine and so that creates more space between the uh, vertebra so the interval tepal disc have a chance to get plump and, and staying really hydrated helps too and just rest in this wellness space Breathe in. Let your block come out and slowly go up to seated, a seated position facing the front of the room. And we'll let the ear drop to the shoulder. And if you want to add on, the other arm reaches down and the hand helps out so it's a little neck stretch. And Cheryl, that's for you. A little diagonal helps get that your scapula. Ear to shoulder on the other side, your arm reaches down. Oh, that feels good. And a little diagonal. Right down the middle is chin to chest, hands. And then just bring your spine up into neutral and then just take a moment to place your hands on your heart. So this meditation is creative workshop and there's usually four areas that we tend to have focus. This one's gonna be on our body, which can include the mind as well, but I'm going to Visualize how I want my body to be. I am strong. I am flexible. I am mobile. I am agile. I am balanced. I am radiant. I am vibrant. My cells emanate wellness. I am capable. I speak only good words about my body. I don't say things like aging process because I know that with practice and training, I get stronger. I get more toned, I get leaner, I visualize myself doing my passions that I enjoy. So whatever hobbies you enjoy and whatever hiking, walking, Pilates, yoga, weight training, visualize yourself staying toned and strong and doing those things well because you practice them. Visualize your mind being clear and focused 
and, and, and staying good thoughts. So just like you feed your body good food, you feed your mind good thoughts. I visualize clarity and focus. I don't say things like I have ADD, I have OCD. I don't say those things. I say things that uplift me and I stay focused on the good. I'm going to bless my body and my mind to the highest good and enjoy that evidence today as I go through the day, how much of those evidences of my words and affirmations are proof. With so much appreciation, thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Bye. Have a great day.